and um, get started with uh, the minutes were provided in the agenda. Um, so I would entertain a motion uh, to approve the minutes as presented from the August 4th meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, minutes approved. All right, uh, next item on the agenda. Uh, and I'll let Christine uh, take with this board vacancies and ap applications. So I am sorry to report we haven't had any new applications since we met last. We still have an opening for a mental health practitioner. Um, so um, I will continue doing what I can. If you guys come across someone who you think would be an excellent candidate, please send them my way, send them the city clerk's way. Um, we will continue trying to get someone. Um, yeah, they keep trying. They push out things, but no one so far has shown interest. I know that, um, you know, comprehensive mental health, which is now Burrell, um, they are still busy with that transition and still overwhelmed. And I'm sure that is the case for most mental health practitioners in our area that they are overwhelmed right now with work. So hopefully we'll be able to find someone soon. What is your, what is your definition of a mental health professional? Well, um, it's for us, it's mental health practitioner and we're looking for somebody, I mean, whether it's a psychiatrist or a psychologist, some of that's going to be up to the board of health to tell me when, you know, you guys review the applications um, whether you think someone fits. Um, I'm sure that we could have a pretty broad definition of what a mental health practitioner is. Um, the biggest thing for the city council um, is that they either have to live within the city of Independence or they have to have their primary, you know, practice work be here within Independence. So. Because when I when I used to refer for mental health, many times you know, they, they'd end up seeing either a psychiatric social worker. Some people chose to see a, uh, a ministerial counselor. I mean, there was so many different subcategories. And uh, so I wasn't quite sure what criteria you use. We did not define it when we wrote it in the code. So there is uh, some leeway there. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Um, broadens our applicant possibilities. So we'll keep looking. Uh, COVID update, discussion, outbreak. Where do we stand? Well, the uh, area, the six counties in the uh, Mark region have actually been trending downward a little bit in the last week. Uh, basically the only data that you have that you can pay much attention to are hospitalization rates you know people that are sick enough to be in the hospital because diagnosis rates are i, I would wager 80 percent of people that get a COVID diagnosis did it at cvs and never told their pcp and even if they do their pcp is not required to report it unless they did the test um, so uh, it has been, has been trending downward. Uh, they're averaging about 44 people per day being hospitalized in uh, eastern Jackson County. Uh, we're averaging about four or so in the four hospitals out this way, not counting Kansas City proper. Um, it's still higher than what it was in July of 21, but is it's actually higher than what it was in April of 22, but um, trending downward a little bit, uh, which everybody thinks pretty much is getting ready for everybody going back inside and infecting one another once again. Uh, so just in time for the flu to uh, increase hospital beds as well. So, uh, and I think, uh, didn't, who was it, Christina, that had confirmed that they were seeing? Uh, oh, the ER. Yeah, uh, ER, Center Dr. Had Duncan. That mm -hmm. uh, their caseload was decreasing significantly. 
So it's still primarily, I think the common thought amongst most specialists in this area is that everybody has either had the vaccine and or had COVID and the people who say they haven't just didn't get sick enough to notice that they had it. Um, the newer variants, unfortunately, you don't get a very long lasting respite from the risk. You get about five or six weeks before your immunity to that particular variant goes back to what it was before. So the key is just to try to not be sick enough to be in the hospital. So the response to the new uh, COVID vaccine is uh, really underwhelming. Uh, I think they're running <laughs> Uh, one or two percent of people are interested in getting the vaccine. So the, those of us who are uh, fall into the old fogey uh, category, like Dr. Legler and myself, uh, need to get our shots and people with chronic illnesses need to get their shots so that we don't fall into the hospitalization category. So, Well, I got the I double dose uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, right left. So it was a, it was a fun day. Uh, <laughs> after that, but uh, it's done. So uh, I just I, like to say, this is Peter yeah. Muleman. I joined and just I just caught uh, uh, Terry's uh, report. Thank Welcome. You. I will add for the department that we have actually had um, pretty good response on people actually coming out for the clinic, and um, they have. We've had a lot of phone calls from people. They're very excited. We apparently are one of the few departments in the area that has the Moderna booster. Um, and that has attracted people to us um, who would prefer that. Um, I went ahead and I was didn't mean to, but apparently I, I received the trifecta now of the vaccines um, because I started out with Moderna, then I got a J&J, &J, and now I've had my Pfizer booster. So uh, my superpowers have kicked in. I'm very proud of them. Um, but we we're still having, you know, um, 100 or more per month, which is not, I mean, anywhere we used to do, of course, a thousand a day. Um, but we're still doing much better than we had been doing there for a while. So we're still having people come out. It's a steady flow. It's just a very slow trickle. So, Christina, are we confident that the flu vaccine, I know we're talking COVID, is the is the right mix for this upcoming flu season? I'm never confident of anything now after COVID hit. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't make guesses anymore. Wish I did. You're wise. Um, I, I think it can't hurt at all. And I think it's going to help a lot in getting mine, getting my sons, getting my families. So everyone should. Are they seeing much difference between the bivalent Pfizer and the bivalent Moderna as no. far as efficacy or anything? Pretty no. interchangeable. Okay. Yeah. And we'll tell people that, you know, they're pretty interchangeable, but then we have some people who are diehard Pfizer or diehard Moderna, and we are happy to accommodate whatever gets them through the door and gets them to get their booster. We will help them do that. Okay, uh, Christina, back to you with the department update. Yeah, so um, we are, I mean, I wish I should say, you know, the department's fully stood back up and we're way back, you know, where we were before um, years ago, but we're not. Um, it's still taking time. Um, it's not probably a big shocker to you guys, but trying to hire nurses um, it's difficult, uh, especially when you don't do not pay traveling nurse pay. Um, so we're we're still short on um, part time nurses that we need. Um, so we are struggling there. We're struggling to get some people on, but we were able to hire some new people uh, just in the last. Well, since the beginning of August, I think we've had three new people start, um, which is exciting. Um, they are all working really hard. We've had some good starts on some grants that we hadn't really had the staff time to really focus on. So we're getting starts on things like uh, we have, it's called a local public health disparities initiative grant, um, where we're working on making sure that 
people in lower socioeconomic statuses are able to get access to healthful foods. We're also sending out this week a community health assessment, which um, <laughs> which we are happy to be doing again. And I'm excited. I meant to share the version, the final draft with you guys, and I failed, so I'll send it out tonight um, for you guys to see. And we should get responses back. Um, I believe November 2nd, we're giving them about a month to complete. We're sending out, I think it ended up being 9,996 um, households are going to be receiving them out of the approximately 50,000 households in the city. Um, and so we're excited for that to happen, for us to actually get some primary data that's up to date. Um, we're asking questions from about mental health. We're asking questions about COVID. We're asking questions about sleep, tobacco, you know, you name it. This was our opportunity to get that information again that we hadn't gotten before. And we were fortunate enough that we had a grant um, step forward and we had a little bit of wiggle room with some extra grant funds and they agreed that if we could hurry up and get it done, they'd be happy to fund it. And so we we got it done with a lot of staff work. Um, Christina, is that something yeah. is that something that's available uh, online or is it only if you get the form? So we're going to do it two ways. Um, we're sending out, we're mailing it out to everybody. So they should start getting it this week. Um, and then there's a self-addressed envelope that they can send it back in the hard copy. There's also an online version that they'll have a link to. In order to ensure that we don't have any sort of a bias, um, we decided we would actually do two versions of it. There'd be the version that's going to go out first, which is if you received it, there's that online link. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to publish a different online link so that we can be sure that those 9,000 households have the opportunity to do it first and we don't confuse them and they go to the other link. We want to be able to compare and we want to get as many answers back as possible, but we don't want to have bias in there. So, and we also know that there are going to be people who follow our Facebook page and other social media accounts that maybe don't even live in independence and are going to complete it anyway. So. So what are you hoping for a return rate? Um, so at least 16% is what we're hoping for. In the past, um, we would get anywhere between 16 to 25%. Um, one of a different grant actually stepped forward and said that they would pay for incentives. Um, so um, we have different things that people could randomly be entered to win if they complete. Um, so we're we're hoping we can get the 16 percent. We want something to make sure that we're and I think at the 16 percent return rate, we're at a 95, 90 uh, percent confidence interval. We'd like to have it higher than that, but we will be happy with 90% if that's what we can get. So how long does it take for someone to complete the survey? It's three pages front and back. Okay, so, so it's nothing. I mean, and we, we tried to do essentially check boxes. So for the most part, as long as you can just go through and fly through, I mean, it didn't take me, it took me less than 10 minutes to complete it. Um, and I'm sure most people can just fly through. If you there are places where you can um, expand on your answer should you choose. And in the past, we have most definitely had people who have wanted to say a lot more to us, and that is absolutely fine. Um, there'll be some, though, that, of course, do the bare minimum and turn it back in. So. OK, is that uh, all the department news for tonight? I think so, unless I forgot something. OK, uh, then we'll move on to the next item, then discussion on mental health co-responder program. Some background so, here. Yeah, so that's me again. Sorry. Um, so John was able to finish his pilot. Um, and I guess we're we're calling it right now pilot one um, because we decided we wanted to go out and make some changes and start again. Um, but he went out to over 100 calls. I believe it was like 138 calls. Um, 
he was incredibly moved by all of the need um, and the work that could be done. Um, but in the end, I'm going to tell you that it was an absolute success. I mean, there are definitely things we need. And the biggest thing we need is manpower. Um, just this week, we were able to identify a grant that we hope is going to be able to pay for um, a licensed clinical social worker and possibly two licensed clinical social workers. Um, because right now we're relying on ARPA funds to pay for that. Uh, Comprehensive Mental Health, we had hoped to partner with, but they are understaffed themselves. So uh, for now, we're if we want to continue the program, we're going to need to fund it. Um, they're looking to also identify additional paramedics who can do this. Um, but he was out there. He saw, you know, he responded to everything from homelessness to suicidal ideation, um, you know, drunken disorderly, just a lot of different things that were considered um, lower, safer calls for him to be able to respond to. At first, he responded with PD, um, and then they would, as soon as they determined it was safe, they would clear the scene. Um, but he just, he said it was just a totally different thing for him, and it 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 moved him, but it was, as you can imagine, um, it was a lot emotionally. So we know that we're going to need to set up to make sure that we have support for any staff that work on this going forward. Christina, but, did he wind up making any calls, just just the two of them, just the team without PD? Yes. Yes. After what? just about a week or two, um, PD got more comfortable with them. And depending on who was depending on who was dispatching, they would sometimes, you know get dispatched to just the right calls, just the right sweet spot. Quite a few. I think they were averaging um, almost like one per hour on the days that they were out doing it, um, which was a good number for them. It was what they could handle to be able to spend the right amount of time with these individuals and get them to the resources that they needed. There were times where, you know, what they, what the person really needed was transport to their mental health practitioner. Um, transport to a safe place. Um, sometimes it was as simple as that, but meeting people where they were needed was exactly what we needed. So um, PD is strongly supporting it, FIRE is strongly supporting it. It's a good program. Um, one of the things that they know they need to identify and work on, um, we're short on dispatchers right now, so they never had the ability to sit down large groups of them and train them on a new way to dispatch, um, it's going to take time for that to be learned. So yeah, that, that's the question. How does dispatch even make those evaluations, determinations? Um, to send so they, they have almost like a logic model or a flow chart of additional questions that they need to ask if, you know, if someone says this, then it should trigger them to say that. They know that if there are certain codes, I'm not a dispatcher, so I'm not going to even pretend to say the correct code, but if there was a 118, they know now a 118 can be responded by, you know, John can respond to that. Um, so if they, they figure out the codes and they know which ones they feel comfortable with. And the dispatchers have a cheat sheet. Um, John, John laughed and he was he shared he's out right now um, helping deal with Hurricane Ian. So he's not here, but um, he shared this last week that he was sure that they were all going to be mad at him um, because he you know, was bringing them one more thing that they would have to do and they were already overworked. And he said, you know, of course, our dispatchers were not like that at all. What they were concerned about was making sure that he was safe and that they were dispatching it correctly. Um, they're incredibly short staffed, but, you know, their hearts are just as much in it as, as everybody else's. They want to do the right thing and have a good outcome. They want people to be helped. So. So have you tried to estimate if you had enough, how many staff would that be? Well, it depends what enough is. Um, what I would love to see is five units, five 
pairs um, that should give us almost 24 seven coverage. Right now, we're gonna be happy if we can have two separate units um, to help share that load. Uh, we've discussed We've discussed lots of options. Um, we're going to, you know, start out this next round with trying to have two um, and build it up as we go. Get more buy in um, with all levels. So and make sure that there's enough relief for those when they need some downtime after some of those really tough calls. Okay. The good news is they've identified that sometimes, depending on who would normally get called out to a call, it's actually a cost savings, of course, to sometimes send just the paramedic and the social worker than it would be to send, you know, a pumper with three guys on it out or a pumper and then two police officers and, you know, an ambulance crew. It's not a big surprise there. It's cheaper to send the two individuals and have them drive someone in their SUV to their doctor's appointment than to send everybody else. And it has a better outcome. So is he quantifying that? They're trying. Um, the tough part about quantifying it is they know anecdotally what they would expect to come out to a call, but they can't tell you necessarily how, you know, if somebody would be called off partway there, they can't say for sure that every single call would result in X. Right. Um, and so it's hard for him to absolutely say. He can say how much it costs for him to go out. And we can say how much it would cost in these situations. Um, right now, that that's one of the other things is they're working on making sure that they have a, a good system for recording all the data. Because um, right now it's it's a lot of him going through notes and making a log himself than having a log built in because we don't have really anything built in for the system yet. So trying to figure that out and keep track himself until we find something better is what we need. Okay. Dr. Morse, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have a... No, I, I was just going to say it's going to take a long time for him to, to be able to figure that out. The Denver uh, group, the STAR program, and the Portland groups have been very forthcoming with their data and it's just amazing the the cost savings that are there for the police department and the fact that they can actually get a cup of coffee once in a while or not be responding to two places simultaneously it's it's really good so we're all hoping for the best yeah they've been very clear that we can't promise this is going to save the city a ton of money but we can promise that maybe you know we might have better response times and that's one of the things we want to do with the second pilot is try to track response times and compare them. Um, they're hoping to start the second pilot right around the holidays um, and track response times and see if they're better year over year. Um, because what we're concerned about is not necessarily saving the city money as much as we are with ensuring that you know public safety is able to get to where they're supposed to be in a timely manner and we're being the most efficient we can and helping out as much as we can. So good outcomes is what we want. Okay. Uh, Christine, that covers our agenda for tonight. Do you want to remind everyone of our next meeting date? Well, I put you on the spot. You did. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm good at that. It's okay. December 8th is the second. Well, we always do the first Thursday. My bad. So December 1st is the first Thursday in December. So hopefully everybody is able to make that. Otherwise, I'll try to send it out. I'll try to do better and send it out in a more timely manner. But, um, well, you know, time gets away from me. Work gets away from me. It seems like there's 12 million people who want my attention all the time. So Understood. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, you're on your own. Um, <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for everyone's time tonight. Christina, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.